Beryl ramping up towards hurricane status on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 29th. So we have a uh, first real threat of the season really in the Atlantic with Tropical Storm Beryl expected to become a substantial hurricane as it heads towards Barbados and the Lesser Antilles and into the Eastern Caribbean early next week. This weekend it's expected to intensify and it is well on course right now to become a hurricane by Sunday. It's day 29 of Atlantic hurricane season and apart from Bell, we had two other areas of interest, a 30% chance moving through the Yucatan Peninsula right now and a 60% system behind Beryl which could uh, really move along with that storm and become a hurricane in and of itself even possibly next week. It's day 46 in the Eastern Pacific and we have a 20% area of interest there that's off the coast of Mexico that's starting to look a little bit better on model runs uh, to potentially form early to middle next week. Uh, but as of right now, the Eastern Pacific is quiet. In the Western Pacific, it's very quiet. There's no areas of interest right now. We were watching a tropical disturbance that was moving through the South China Sea a few days ago. Well, it's gone now. The Philippines are having a few little storms there, but in general, it's a very quiet basin. And in the North Indian Ocean, it's a similar story here as well. Again, similar monsoonal patterns that we get at this time of year. And quite a lot of storms blowing up over central and eastern India right now. Um, really blowing up some thunderstorms, but nothing to do with tropical cyclone activity right now. And for what it's worth, the southwest Indian Ocean, where it's well into the off-season now, there's no areas of interest, nothing to track here. And in just two days' time, it will roll over to a new naming list for the upcoming season, 2024 to 25. Well then, let's take a look at the main story, and that's Tropical Storm Beryl, of course. A hurricane watch was issued for Barbados earlier today, and that could be upgraded to a hurricane warning soon, possibly even at the next update, but I'm not sure yet. It's 10.53 kilometres from Paramaribo, 14.39 from Barbados, 15.61 from Trinidad, 1800 from Antigua and 2234 from Puerto Rico. I'd like to point out that we will be doing we will be doing a live event later on in the, is, this morning at 10 a.m. Atlantic Standard Time and we'll be talking more about this storm and any warnings that have changed during that moment. Well, let's check the satellite imagery of this storm then, and there it is, parading across the Atlantic, moving almost due west, a little bit of a northerly element, probably around 280 degrees bearing. Uh, but right now, it's looking decent, 50 mile per hour winds, a pressure of 1,000 millibars, and intensifying right now. It's got a good appearance about it, blowing up some cloud tops, and possibly a little bit of a gap in the middle there. I wouldn't call an eye yet, uh, but there is a little uh, depression there in the middle of the storm which can often happen with tropical storms without it actually being a bona fide eye who knows it may be we'll have to find more time before we can take a look at it properly there's no direct observations into the storm right now we don't have recon i believe they're not flying out until tomorrow unfortunately uh, but the best we've got right now really is the satellite imagery and we might get an ascap pass here and there but as it gets stronger that will become less important there it is on the satellite imagery we're looking at some rapid scan before and this is some infrared you can see See that gap opening up there in the middle once again big question mark is it an eye is it a mid-level feature uh, we'll have to wait and see and wait for some more frames to come out uh, before we can make any judgments on that uh, but it is looking decent its structure right now a big band shrimping out towards it there although it may have lost a little bit of its shape in those last few frames well, this is the Atlantic Ocean off the east coast of the United States. It's actually looking quite quiet here, but a lot of cloud cover funneling up towards the Atlantic Canada region. This is the Caribbean Sea, and you can see Invest 94L. That's the one moving through the Yucatan right now, uh, throwing up some decent thunderstorms, actually, uh, and lots of dry air in the middle of the two storms uh, with uh, some Saharan dust as well clogging up the region. But Beryl hasn't really been phased by that so far, so I expect it's not going to be a big issue. 
Uh, this is a look at the eastern Pacific side of it as well. There's a big clump of storms there as well in the Gulf of Tehuantepec off the coast of Mexico, and that may end up contributing to that potential system later on that we've got there. This is radar imagery from Belize and Mexico of Invest 94L. It does have some rotation clearly, uh, but organization is pretty poor. 30% chance on that one to develop in the next five days, and that would be in the Bay of Campeche. Well, in the Western Pacific, we're looking at a pretty disorganized display here, quite a lot of small-scale storms across the Philippines and out over the ocean. The North Indian Ocean looking quite busy there as well, with lots of bigger storms there across eastern India into West Bengal and Bangladesh. Uh, so certainly, I imagine a lot of rainfall occurring over India right now. And the Arabian Sea looking like this, a little uh, disturbance there in the northern part of the region, uh, but it's really not looking very good right now, possibly producing a bit of rain to the coast of Oman. Well, sea surface temperatures are looking pretty decent in the eastern Pacific, up and above 30 degrees Celsius in a few spots off the coast of Mexico. Also in the Gulf of California, those temperatures are getting up there as well, the 28 degrees. The hot spots in the Atlantic are off Cuba through the Florida Straits and up the coast of western Florida, as well as the coast of Louisiana where temperatures are pushing over 30 degrees Celsius. Where Beryl is right now, they're around 27 to 28 degrees and they'll get warmer as it gets towards the Lesser Antilles. The western Pacific region looking very warm indeed along the coast of the Philippines. 30 to 32 degrees Celsius, quite commonplace there and stretching up to Taiwan and the southern Ryukyu Islands as well. In the North Indian Ocean, the hottest spots right now are off the coast of West Bengal and Odisha and also off the coast of Gujarat on the west coast there uh, in the main regions of course we've got the very warm waters near the Arabian Peninsula which is pretty standard. Compared to average then, look at the orange zones there, that's above average waters right now and that's obviously good for tropical cyclone development and you can see the Atlantic has got plenty of it in the main development region and into the Caribbean Sea, temperatures 2 to 3 degrees above average at least. Eastern Pacific is a little bit more moderate, the Western Pacific also has quite a few hot spots there as well, South China Sea through Taiwan and into the subtropical zones. Oceanic heat content is still looking very good for the Western Pacific with very high amounts of energy there. Any storm that enters those areas are going to have a really decent time and a good starting point from these sea surface temperatures and uh, oceanic heat content. Eastern Pacific not so good but that doesn't rule out significant developments. The Atlantic well it has to be said there's huge amounts of energy pretty much ahead of Beryl's track I'm afraid. From Barbados westward through the eastern Caribbean and central Caribbean region and past Jamaica those oceanic heat content values are very high. Well, let's check the computer models then, the GFS for the next five days. This is uh, taking Beryl towards the west-northwest there. Pretty clear cut until it reaches the Lesser Antilles and then into the Eastern Caribbean. The big question mark to its long-term track is whether it will hit Hispaniola and Cuba and that will weaken the storm substantially there. I also want to point out that second system behind it becomes a Hurricane 2. Barbados just escapes hurricane force winds on this run and then it moves through St. Vincent and the Grenadines probably with hurricane force winds for many of the those islands as well reaching Jamaica near the end of day five. This is the Eastern Pacific looking at this view as well with this potential system that forms and you just saw the Invest 94L move through there as well tries to develop too and then we're looking 3rd 4th of July there this system developing looks like it might be getting a little bit more likely and I also want to point out again uh, 6th of July if we don't get a storm by then in the Eastern Pacific it will be the latest start there in the satellite era that's a very long time. Well, looking at rainfall expectations for this region as well, and obviously we are concerned about the hurricane force winds, which could reach up to 100 miles per hour wherever the storm makes landfall or directly hits. Uh, but we're also looking at significant rainfall amounts as well, not just from Beryl. The thing behind it as well will produce a second stream there that plows into the Dominican Republic. And then that third area off to the left there with 12 inches of rain from Invest 94L in Mexico. So there's tons to look at right now with rainfall maximums from all three storms around the 12 inch mark which is 300 millimeters in the lesser Antilles it's around six or seven inches there 
In the longer range, day 5 to 10, we watch these storms move through again. That second storm gets completely annihilated by uh, the Dominican Republic in Haiti there. And Beryl is still active towards the end of day 10, uh, stalling a little bit in the Gulf of Mexico. And then it starts to consolidate again as it starts to move towards Texas. And we know where we're going with that, I think. There's that Eastern Pacific storm off the left-hand side of the screen as well, dying off by the time we get towards the 7th or 8th of July. So it would be quite a short-lived storm if it does form. Well, scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all of our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request at any time. And our still waiting for Hone t-shirt is still available right now because that storm still hasn't formed either. It's a running joke in our community there. In the silly range then, at day 10 to 16, look at this, the redevelopment of Beryl and a hurricane strength landfall there in south central Texas um, along the coast just north of Corpus Christi and Rockport probably and then moving inland um, and then dying off gradually over the following days. Now that is still very long range and there's a huge amount of uncertainty on this one. It may not even get that far as a tropical cyclone, it may recurve sooner, it may even recurve later but more likely if it does become a stronger storm it favors an earlier recurve well on this day we had another big monster and it was in the western pacific on june 29th 2004 20 20 years ago now it was typhoon mindule which was just off the coast of the philippine islands right now we also had typhoon ting ting which was off the coast there as well uh, out over the open western pacific reaching category one status on this day mindule reached a peak i think it was about 145 miles per hour and it certainly looks the picture there on uh our featured image. That was 2004, which notably had quite a late start to the Atlantic hurricane season and still became one for the record books in one way or another. We are code orange today. It's a pretty serious threat that Beryl is posing to large population regions. And the next name now in the Atlantic is Chris. In the Eastern Pacific, it's a letter that we're still waiting for. And in the Central Pacific, we've been waiting five years for Hone to form. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Gamey, and in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Asna. So far now, we're up to 22 storms around the world, which I have to say is quite a way below what we would expect. Uh, and so far, we are about 40% below average in accumulated cyclone energy. Beryl might change that though. Robin is next in the Australian region, Jeremy in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and Pitta in the South Pacific. That's all for now. We'll be live at 10 a.m. Atlantic Standard Time. Become an ultimate fan today.